，您正在收看的是《新西兰报》，中心之窗试点。Team for hosting us and for all of you for being here because I know by virtue of your presence that means that you have played some role, some function in getting us to the place that we are、um, here today. My role today is a very different one than perhaps what I would usually、um, play. I'm not here specifically to announce anything. I'm not here to conduct an intensive question and answer session with the media. <laughs> Thankfully, at five o'clock on a Saturday, I am here to support this kaupapa. I am here in support of the work that is going to continue from this point on, and the ambition that needs to sit behind it. And I'm also here to say thank you. There are a number of people that have led us to this point, and. Alongside, of course, thanking AUT for the role in、uh, hosting us, I actually wanted to acknowledge a, a few groups that are a little closer to home、uh, for me as well.、Uh, having MPs like Shannon Halbert and Camilla Bellich here is a snapshot of the support that exists in, in Parliament for this work. And here, in particular, of course, as leader of the Labour Party, I do want to acknowledge. Uh, our Rainbow members and our Rainbow Caucus, who have been key in continuing to ensure that we maintain ambition and progress、uh, in this space. I want to acknowledge, in his absence,、uh, the uh, Deputy Prime Minister Grant Robertson, an openly gay man in politics, who fights hard every day where he sees corners of discrimination. And there persist many forms of discrimination in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and relative to other places where, yes, we may hail ourselves as being better than most, but that is not good enough for those who have a day-to-day -day experience of what discrimination means in our country. And so he is one of many who seeks to weed that out in this country. And I wanted to acknowledge in his absence his leadership, but I wanted to take. Particular attention、uh, to a minister so humble that she won't, of course, acknowledge this herself. But when I heard Dr. Aisha Birrell stand up in Parliament in her maiden speech, and I don't know if you've ever watched maiden speeches in Parliament, they are a little like an extended Oscar speech, except before you've received anything.、Um, <laughs> they're a chance to pay tribute to the people that got you to the place of being in Parliament, which is which is a really momentous thing. Only 120 people. At any given time, have that privilege of service, and there are a chance to talk about your journey and what motivates you in politics. And you will hear a whole raft of motivations that lead people into that place. Just this week, Dan Rosewarn,、uh, a member of the New Zealand Defence Force, who is a mechanic by trade, but experienced leukemia, and through accessing drugs that he knew were funded by Pharmac and being treated in our public health system. Wanted to make sure that he was part of a country that continued to expand the care that people in New Zealand receive. But the person who made the speech I wanted to speak about briefly was was Dr. Virrell. When I heard her talk about her experience treating those in New Zealand who experience infectious diseases or illnesses which bring them into critical care, and one of those patients that she spoke of was someone experiencing HIV, you could hear the passion that she had for her work. But also the politics of her work. Now,、uh, I'm going to make a guess here, but I'm assuming that she, like me, is essentially what we'd call a child of the '80s. A firm nod, we're safe. <laughs>、um, and you know, in many ways, of course, publicly as we knew it, HIV emerged in the public consciousness in the 1980s. And as it emerged in our lifetimes. We should see its transmission end in our lifetimes. That should be our collective ambition, and in seeking to do so, it should never just be about a health response, although that is incredibly key. But it also needs to be about our societal response. Now, I have not had the close experience that Dr. Virrell has had with those who have lived with HIV. My engagements have often been cursory, but at community level, seeing the. Often, refugee and migrant communities working alongside those who have experienced、uh, and who live with HIV, through to those who may have experienced a time where, before we had so much、uh, advancement in medical care, having lost 